California produces more than 80% of the strawberries in the United States, and these systems rely on plastic mulch covered beds that provide many benefits like saving water and suppressing weeds. The plastic also creates sustainability challenges because it's difficult to recycle and because covering most of the field with plastic creates problems with soil erosion and runoff when it rains. The erosion and runoff issue really worried me when I began doing organic strawberry research because the strawberry fields that we were setting up on our research farm reminded me of the corrugated metal roof that I grew up underneath in the tropics. Our roof channeled rain into a tank that gave us our drinking water. And a similar thing happens in strawberry fields when rainwater runs off the plastic into furrows that drain to ditches that lead to rivers and the ocean. And this is a problem because of the loss of precious topsoil and because it reduces recharge of groundwater below the strawberry fields. We rely on that groundwater for irrigation and for drinking water. The runoff can also carry pesticides and nutrients that pollute fragile ecosystems that need our protection. Planting a winter cereal cover crop like barley in the furrow is a great way to reduce the runoff and soil erosion problems. And some of my colleagues found that this reduced the turbidity or the cloudiness of runoff water by about 70%. But here's the problem. These winter cereal cover crops need to be killed so that they don't get too big and compete with the strawberries. And it's hard to control them in a furrow without a grass selective herbicide. These herbicides are not allowed in organic systems. And so this inspired me and some colleagues to do research to try to identify cover crops that are easy to grow and control without conventional herbicides. And that's what I'll be sharing with you over the next several minutes as I talk about two experiments that we did over a four year period. So this first study was focused on Ida gold mustard. It's the type of mustard that produces the mustard that we eat on our sandwiches. It's also got a hollow stem, like a straw. So sometimes I think of growing mustard in these furrows as a way to put straw back into strawberries. Now in this study, we planted the mustard in mid-November to early December after we had transplanted the strawberries. And we planted it at two different seeding rates that I'll call 1x and 3x. The 1x rate had about 16 plants per foot of furrow and the 3x rate had about three times more plants. We let the mustard grow until early February, which was when it was getting around the height of the bed top. And then we mowed it down with a weed whacker so that it wouldn't shade the strawberries. Right before mowing, we measured the biomass of weeds and mustard shoots, and here's what we found. So in this graph, our y-axis show biomass in either pounds per 100 feet of furrow or kilograms per 100 meters of furrow. And what you can see is that the 3x seeding rate produced about 60% more mustard shoot biomass than the 1x rate. And you might think that this increase in mustard biomass at the higher seeding rate would do a good job of suppressing weeds. But unfortunately, the weeds still grew really well right along the edge of the plastic at both seeding rates. And here's a graph that shows that. So in this graph, we've got weed biomass on the y-axis in either pounds per 100 feet or kilograms per 100 meters of furrow. This is the average weed biomass in a furrow without a cover crop versus weeds in a furrow at the 1x rate and then at the 3x rate. So we can see that mustard cover crops reduced weed biomass by about 30 to 40 percent. But ideally, we'd like the weed biomass to be way down here. And that's a level at which we don't expect the weeds will be able to produce any seed. Weed seed production in cover crops is a bad thing because it makes a field more weedy over time. So the bad news from this first experiment is that we need to do a lot more to control weeds than just plant a cover crop at a high seeding rate. But the good news is that Ida Gold Mustard was really easy to kill with mowing with our weed whacker. Unlike a cereal cover crop that would have just regrown when it was mowed, the mustard died right away. So that was a real positive thing that we found in this first experiment. Okay, now for the second experiment. This one was focused on several ways to improve weed suppression. The first thing you might notice is that the cover crop is already at the height of the bed top and the strawberries have not even been transplanted onto those beds yet. 
Now this is a big difference with experiment one where the cover crop was planted after the strawberries were transplanted. Now another thing you might notice is that the cover crop in this second experiment has more than just mustard. We actually mix mustard with Sudan grass, which is a warm season cover crop. We hope that the Sudan grass would grow well during the relatively warm period right after planting in late September and shade out the furrows and suppress weeds and then die as the weather cooled in the fall and winter. Now to achieve this earlier planting day, to speed up the planting process and get the cover crop to grow before the winter rains begin, we developed this special planter. It allows us to plant the furrows of about one acre of strawberries in one hour and lay a temporary line of drip tape in the furrow at the same time. We were then able to apply just a little bit of water to germinate the cover crop and weeds in the furrow and then we quickly hand weeded these bare areas near the plastic using this novel hoe that I developed specifically for use near plastic. You might want to check it out in this other video and learn how to make one out of recycled materials and you can also see it in action. It's pretty cool. Now you might notice that the cover crop looks thicker on this side of the bed. In this second experiment we compared the same seeding rate planted in one line versus in three lines. And what we found was that the three line pattern shaded the furrow faster and produced about 50% more biomass which we think will improve weed suppression and probably do a better job of reducing soil erosion. So here we're removing the drip tape from the furrow so that we can reuse it again and then transplanting the strawberries in early November. Now the cool thing is that the foot traffic from the transplant crew helped to push down the cover crop to the furrow bottom and this reduced the amount of weed whacking of the cover crop that was needed later in the winter. We're still trying to understand why the mixture was dominated by mustard in parts of the field and by Sudan grass in other parts. But in both cases the mixture worked really well to shade out the furrows and the Sudan grass worked just as planned and it died as the weather cooled. It's been a lot of fun working to put straw back into strawberries and watch this practice spread among farmers in our region. It's not a perfect system yet, but we're making good progress to improve these methods and develop new tools that we think will increase the adoption of this more sustainable and greener way of growing strawberries. So stay tuned as we continue to refine these practices. Take care.